You have so long observed the world. Why not consider joining it? But I have no desire to live as humans. I have the Fade. Besides this talk of taking on a solid form, I think you underestimate the danger. When you took the glowing stone to build your body, did the Earth not shake? Valyrium gives us the strength we had when we were of the Fade. We are the best of physical and spirit. I need your wisdom, Solus. To withstand the louder voices who would go too far like Elganon. I need you. This is madness. You must know that. I will always follow where you go. What? This is astounding. The ancient elves were spirits who voluntarily manifested a physical form. I'd rather go back to talking about the Blight. Hey, Lucanus, could Spite turn into an elf? No. Sorry, but... what? This is... I just... Are all elves spirits somehow? Am I a spirit? To be clear, this memory only shows that the first elves originated from spirits. You three are no more spirits than anyone else conceived naturally. Conceived naturally? Guess I'll go ask my mother. The knowledge that an entire people were formed from a mass manifestation could change our entire understanding of magic. If we let it out, is that the right call? Do you want bigoted humans yelling about how elves are demons? Davern's got a point. World's not short on small-minded humans. I don't think people will care right now. We've got evil gods trying to destroy the world. Evil, elven, blighted gods. Don't forget. We have to tell someone, though. Strife and Irulan, at least. If I told Thea and Viago, they'd think I was sampling Viago's poison collection. No one would believe us. Okay. We keep this to people we trust who have good reason to know. No shouting it from the rooftops. Agreed. The Morn Watch has a great deal of experience keeping dangerous secrets. So, beyond the world shaking stuff, what else did we learn here? Solus himself was a spirit. What kind do you think he was? Well, his name is Elvin for pride. Oh, okay. There's something else. Not about spirits, or not all about them at least. Solus didn't want to become a person with a physical body. Right. He only agreed after Mathal begged him. Then that's his regret. He wishes he'd never taken physical form. Maybe, but not just that. Solus was scared. They built their bodies out of lyrium, and it made the ground shake. You think the ground shaking was the Titans? It makes sense, doesn't it? Something was hurting them, taking their blood. So they struck back, like we'd swat a stinging bug. The first memory we saw with Elganon seizing power, it happened at the end of a war. A war between the Titans and the Elves. And we just saw how it started. It feels like we still don't have the full picture. But I think that's part of what Solus regrets. He didn't see the danger. Except he did. He was worried. You said it yourself. He did it for Mithal. Everything that followed, he could have prevented. If he just told her no. Then he's got a war on his conscience. Plus, whatever we find next. Have you created what we need? With this, the proper ritual will sunder every titan from its spirit. But you must know those severed dreams will certainly be driven mad. 
a disembodied blight of pain and anger. It is awful what we're doing. And the only way to end this war. Solus made the weapon that killed the Titans. No, not killed. He cut away their dreams and left them broken and mindless. Dwarves don't even know where they come from because of him. And he knew all along. Lace, what my people did to yours, that's unforgivable. You don't need to apologize. Well, someone should. Our leaders attacked the Titans for their lyrium. Then, when the war turned against the Elves, our leaders did this. And when the war was over, they enslaved your ancestors. No. Solus, Mithal, and Elgernon are the ones who need to apologize. To do such a thing? No wonder regret eats away at Solus. No, it's worse than that. That isn't what Solus regrets. Those severed dreams will be driven mad. A disembodied blight of pain and anger. Mierda. You can't. That's not possible. When a warden hears the calling, it's like a song in their mind. Sound familiar to you, Lace? The song of Lyrium. Of the Titans. We think of the Blight as this monstrous force with no mercy, no compassion. Evil incarnate. Instead, it's a caged animal, mistreated and imprisoned for centuries, until all it knows is fear. In all my talks with him, Solus hates the Blight more than anything. Even more than Elgadon. But it wasn't hatred. It was guilt. He knew this could happen, and he still didn't stand up to Mithal and stop it. Each of these memories has been a deeper regret, and almost all of them involve Mithal. Only one mural left to uncover by my count. If we find it, we'll see what's worse than this. I knew that you would find me soon enough. You need the power of a god, the strength that I alone still carry. The blighted Evanuris will soon break free from their prison. I must make a stronger one that can contain them. While the prison is important, it is not the only goal you seek. Why should I not tear down the veil and bring back immortality to all the elven people? They deserve it. The elven people of today do not deserve to see the world they love be torn apart to salve your conscience. I must fix what I have broken. I am sorry. As am I, old friend. Solus killed Mithal? After all that? Is this another memory from a different time? No. He wore that same outfit in the Inquisition. We knew Solus woke up in this world without most of his power. Now we know how he got it back. By killing the only other god around and stealing her power. All that epic magic and godly power. In the end, it comes down to love and murder. Same as always. Every big mistake Solus made is tied to Mithal. He sacrificed his life as a spirit to join her. He sacrificed his morals when he created the dagger to stop the Titans. When the other gods struck her down, he destroyed the Elven Empire to avenge her. Then he wakes up in this world, where everything's gone but his mistakes. And there she is, alive. And after all he's done, she sides against him again. All these mistakes are his fault, and hers too. If she won't help him fix the world, of course he has to kill her. So, how does everything we know help us now? He's being honest about fighting the Blight. Whatever happens, he won't risk letting it back out into the world. Agreed. 
but he has a plan to escape that prison, and not one we'll like. He turned on Mithal, the one person he was actually loyal to. There's no way he won't turn on us. He's a spirit, or was once. He might be able to possess someone, affect minds, all the things spirits do. He created the Veil. His very nature is tied to it. That will be a source of strength, but also a potential weakness. Mithal has them all messed up. Anything about her or Elgernon is gonna make him angry. Sloppy. Solus thinks he knows what's best for everyone. Anything he does, he'll do while telling himself he's the hero. The bad news is that the God of Lies and Trickery is almost definitely preparing to betray us. The good news is that we've gone through his dirty laundry. So, we know his motivations. You think we can set a trap of our own? That's the hope. You have witnessed the Protector's tale, Dweller. Almost to its end. Almost? How can there be more? When the mighty fall, their echoes cross the ages. An audience is warranted. Speak with your visitor. She awaits you in the crossroads. Events are weaving together quickly now, Rook. For good or ill, the fate of the world shall be decided soon. I received Harding's missive. Your plan is sound. So the Inquisitor's in? Indeed, although she requires a few days to set events in motion. Time is needed to allot her responsibilities to those who are capable of managing them. Once settled, she has pledged herself to your cause. The snake's head must be severed, else the body simply grows anew. And what of your other allies? Will they also be ready? There is no room left for doubt or hesitation. We're battling two gods. Who is ever truly ready for that? But they'll be prepared. I know they will. As they must be, there will not be another opportunity to foil the schemes of Elganarn and Gilanane. If we fail in this, they gain all that is needed to reshape the world in their twisted image. The evil put into place with the aid of their Antum servants at Tearstone will cover the entire world. Look, the gods can't blight the world without their dagger. And they can't finish their dagger until the eclipse, which isn't for another. Elkanon. While you gather your people, I will find the Inquisitor. And Rook, I wish you great luck. Elgernon just caused an eclipse. The gods can finish their dagger. We need to move now. We were supposed to have weeks to prepare. How much time do we actually have? It's not weeks, I can tell you that much. The eclipse is slowly forcing an alignment between the stars and powerful currents in the Fade. Which means what? I'm afraid we've only a few hours until the gods complete their dagger. Lucanus is right. We have to go now. 
No time to scrape up an army, even if we had one. You think we're enough? What will we be facing on the island? There's gonna be blight crap. And where there's blight, dark spawn. Right. Tearstone Island's also crawling with the entire Antom army. They've had time to prepare. It'll be brutal. So will the gods. We're walking right into their lair. We may not all make it out again. Yeah. But if we're going down, let's go down swinging. So let's stop the gods. Whatever it takes. We're with you. The gods won't leave that island. No matter what. No matter what. Then we leave as soon as we can. I want to say important things before, well, everything happens. I have to get the words right, so I wrote them down to make sure. I get it. Things are a little chaotic at the moment. Well, that's one word. Maybe underselling it a bit. Elgrinon blights the moon and everything changes. Now we're rushing off without a plan? It's kind of what we do. Go in without a plan, find something to punch. It's words out so far. But what if this time it doesn't? Things could go wrong, people could get hurt, or... or... See? This is why I wanted notes. If you'd written notes, what would they have said? Maybe something about what we are, what we could be, someday. That I care about you, with all of me. You anchor me. I feel calm. Well, calmer, at least. And I know you. Who you are, who I am. You let me be me. Caring about someone means caring about who they are. Every bit. I wish more people believed that. People like what I could be, want to help me get there. They tell me how to change, how to fix myself like it's that easy. I'm working on it, figuring out how to be me. But most people don't want to wait. But you do. Of course. I like you. That's why I'm scared about what comes next. I want us to stay us, to stay together, but the Evanuris have other plans. I don't give a shit about what Elgonan and Gillanane want. We faced tough odds before, and we're seeing this through. I just keep thinking about Weishaupt, how it almost went, and that was one god and a whole bunch of wardens. We're on our own. Eight of us, and now there's two of them. We're always outmatched and outnumbered. But we make it through okay. Because we've got each other. And that's enough. Is it, though? Has to be. Like you said, it's just us. Rook. Yeah, Balara? Can you stay with me for a little while? Okay, another reason not to get myself killed. I should talk with Varric too. Get any last advice for killing the god? Barak, 
I hope I'm not interrupting whatever you're doing. Take a deep breath. The gods changed all the rules. We're going in blind. The whole team is pretty sure we're going to die. And they might be right. Weird shit is happening. Of course the team's on edge. It's not a personal failing for you to be scared either. I'm not. You're in uncharted territory. It's not like anyone has experience fighting gods. Well, maybe Solus does, but you really don't want to get him talking about it. Too late. My point is, you're doing the best anyone could do in this situation. What I really need is a plan and less bullshit. That's what you're here for, isn't it? Better get to work. Go on. You know where to find me if you need me. Well, let's not keep the gods waiting. It's fortunate we weren't spotted coming in. A lot of dreadnoughts. One shot is all it takes. Now we just have to deal with that. Morgan didn't exaggerate. That's the entire Antom army over there. Doesn't change what we came to do. The gods will know we're here soon, and so will the Antom. We need a distraction. One team to draw off that army, and another to stop the gods from finishing their dagger. I'll take half the team and cause some trouble down by the Antom ships. Wait, I'm the scout. I can get us around this place faster. There'll be Blight farther up, Harding. And Darkspawn. I've fought them before, and I've got the stone on my side. No one's fast enough for that many on Tom. Someone has to do this, Tosh. So who will it be? Harding's right. This requires a good scout. I'll take care of it. I promise. I'll take the rest of us and get to the gods before they finish their dagger and cut open the fade. Once we're in place, the Karnis will take Solus's dagger and ambush Gilliland. Elgernon's pet. One problem at a time. As long as he has that Archdemon, he's invulnerable. Concentrate on Gilliland first. We kill her, take the gods' dagger, then deal with Elgernon. We should go. Wish me a little luck. You got it. Harding. Like you said back at the lighthouse, Rook. We stop the gods. Whatever it takes. Not the quickest path ahead, but we might reach the gods before we're spotted. are making the dagger. I can feel the blight from here. Keep an eye out. <laughs> well, so much for that.
The Antarm aren't taking any chances. Sounds like a lot more Antarm across the bay. What are they saying? Something about Gilanane giving them world crushing power. Mercenaries again. We have mages.
hurt him as well. He knew my name. This place used to be looks like just another old elven palace to me gods must have built hundreds more of those mercenaries we can't let them slow us down
signs of the blight. The gods finished their dagger, open the fade, and unleash all the blight. Even Solus was terrified of that. He may be a smug bastard, but at least a bastard with limits. Try it, and you've got a war. We have to hurry. The Antarm will be looking everywhere after hearing that. It's Harding. Rug, hey! Harding, are you okay? We drew off some on Tom, but you have to hurry. More on the way. Can you open the way out of here? I think so. Let me look.
reloading. No more blight on this side. On top as well.
They send Solus' his dagger. See that flash of green light? That's a tear in the thing. I didn't come all this way to miss our chance. Gods might be close, but they'd be gloating if they finish their dagger. If we kill Gilanade and steal that dagger, then Elganon can't unleash the blight. Fate is blocking the way. We have to set it off. inside that building ahead. We've got to clear it out to get to the gods.
Remember to keep your distance. Such thing. And the first meal I've eaten will be yours. <laughs> 